It's Shinobi, and we are bringing you Block Digest episode 255 at block height 669,873 on Tuesday, February 9th. What is cracking, Jenny? Well, um, I had the great experience of not being on the internet very much over the past couple days, and I have to say I'm pretty feeling pretty good about that decision because it seems like while I was gone everyone was just screaming about Elon Musk so I feel like I don't I didn't miss anything <laughs> yeah that reminds me of a really funny headline I saw uh over the weekend um a Trump aide said that Trump is happier since he was kicked off social media <laughs> it's, it's huh. almost like the internet is toxic or maybe the person is, but I feel like that's a different topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fence on guard. But yeah, um, I don't know. Bitcoin price is doing things, apparently, because Mr. Mars is uh, tweeting about the dog. Yeah, yeah I, I think we should touch on that um, before we get into the actual stories on the news desk. I mean, like... That is a pretty crazy thing, given how trollish Elon is about everything in general, let alone this space. But I mean, like Tesla putting Bitcoin on the balance sheet, um, I can't help but assume that means that SpaceX did that a long time ago and Tesla did it last because a private company doesn't have to publicly declare that stuff, but a public one does. So, um, yeah, <laughs> well, I think, I think I'll, the odds of Elon having the money to actually send stuff to Mars, um, dramatically increased. Yeah. Well, all I have to say is, uh, I, I'm not going to allow anyone, least of all him to put anything in my brain, especially if it's not open source. Thank you very much. I would like my brainware to be open source. Oh, fuck no, me either. But I'll sure as hell use his satellite internet that doesn't suck and let him send things to Mars, because that's cool. Wouldn't it be funny if he goes to Mars and gets uh, into a Matt Damon situation? Eh. I don't know if that's really possible if SpaceX is sitting back on Earth with a giant Bitcoin war chest. Didn't they film most of that movie in the US? Or was it somewhere else? I can't remember. Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't seen that since it came out. And wasn't that like 10 years ago almost? It's a very... Well, I, I don't even know. But all I remember is it was definitely an American movie because the whole idea of like one man surviving on his own and the the reason he survives is just because he goes out and does it. <laughs> and that's that's how you explain his survival is very American. Merka! But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't really care about Tesla doing stuff. Who cares? They're a car company. But the idea of SpaceX having put that much into Bitcoin, that could get interesting. Could get very interesting. The one movie where Sean Bean didn't die. <laughs> Sean Bean should do Tesla commercials. What? I don't think that would go well because Sean Bean's in it, so he has to die in the Tesla commercial. And will that really make Teslas look nice? No, see, no, see, because it has to do with Mars, that means he's not going to die because he didn't die in the film about Mars. It's like a good I luck think if he's going to do that, it has to be a joke about Teslas exploding. I, I, I think it has to. Anyway, let's get on with <laughs> the actual news besides... Elon and Doge. So, 
Um, I think the governor of Nevada needs to put down the crack pipe. Um, because he's planning to push some pretty bonkers legislation um, that would pretty much let any private company, I think it's like 50,000 acres or something like that, but who owns um, more than um, a defined contiguous parcel of land in Nevada, um, would effectively be able to become their own governments as equal with a county, including the ability to impose taxes, form school districts and courts, and provide their own government services. So yeah, I, I think that he really needs to put the crack pipe down and not help make 2021 worse than 2020. Because uh, yeah. That, that is just a horrifyingly bad idea. Has this man never watched sci-fi in, in his life? Um, that, and specifically that region of the country, um, there are a shit ton of rare earth mineral deposits, which means there's thorium there too. So in the midst of a giant global chip shortage where we were already talking about building up that kind of manufacturing capacity in the U.S., um, one of the states where a lot of that shit is just wants to let corporations be their own county governments there in one of the most strategic, important places for this country in terms of potentially future energy supply and all the stuff we need to make our own chips. So, yeah, um, he's high on fucking crack. Um, this is the part of the cyberpunk movie that they never explain, which is how we get to a corporate dystopian cyberpunk future. This is how it starts. Put down the crack pipe. So wait, you're saying that you don't want a harem of wives and stuff? I do not want corporations <laughs> to be able to claim they have their own land on sovereign terms um, equal to a government in one of the most strategically resource important parts of this country. No, I don't want that. I think that's crazy. Um, that that's crazy. I mean, I don't know. With the right people, um, uh, on the I, I mean, yes. On one hand, you could get a a real life incarnation of Mad Max. On the other hand, a lot of good things could happen with that scenario. I I see nothing but bad things. Um, I see nothing but the giant mega corpse who have been booming and raking in the dough while lockdowns crush small businesses um literally become their own governments i think that's really dumb like that's a really dumb idea like you, you look look at the whole kind of you know where those lockdowns are being implemented and where companies have influence and you know how they're directly just stop right now okay no they should not be allowed to be their own governments that's crazy that that's fucking crazy could it be any corporation or does it have to be a certain size or something? Like, could it be like a one man corporation? Um, I'm not aware of any restrictions with that. Just the like size of land parcels required to do it. But, um, dude, so you're, you're telling me that I can just, I can just make a corporation of myself. And like, if I have enough money, I can just get land in Nevada and make my own AKA government. Not really government, because I'm an anarchist. <laughs> yes, I guess. Unless they add a bunch of caveats. I, I don't see how this is a bad thing. <laughs> well, Literally can it's make just, a state-free these... zone in the middle of the U.S. I don't know. It just, it just seems like a really bad idea to take a bunch of giant corporations and give them a playground like this when the only reason they are such giant corporations is regulatory capture and a disproportionate benefit from, you know, things like taxes extorted from everybody and just outright let them just your land now. You can tax people. You can like I It's just a really bad idea. Like well, that to me does not. That That is not going to make a stateless area. That is just going to explicitly acknowledge these corporations that benefit from regulatory capture. Just it, like we're sovereign now. Like you guys just admitted it. Like that, that's all that will come of this in, in my mind. 
Yeah, I mean, that that is probably going to happen, but also, like, if anyone could technically do it, um, I mean, technically, that's how, uh, that's how America got started. <laughs> A bunch of mining companies and such went out and settled the West by making their own towns, and apparently... Uh, Skrit is becoming a thing now. There's, I, I heard recently that there's like companies who are paying their own employees in shitcoins, which I would never do. But it just sounds like it's still the Wild West and it hasn't gone away. So I don't know. Is it that different? Considering the nightmare of the modern world, yes, I, I, I would say so. Yeah, it's just like I, I, say- I don't, I, I don't see stateless anything happening without these types of companies that were built up because of government going down with government like just switching over one to the other you're you're just changing labels and calling the same thing something different yeah i have to say uh the the level in one of the tomb raider games where you get to run around the nevada desert and then you get taken to area 51 is like my favorite part of the game have you ever played Tomb Raider Shinobi? Actually, that is one of the classics I have never played. I can't believe you. Seriously, you weren't even you weren't even among the guys who like you didn't even buy it to enjoy the game. You just wanted to buy it because you got to stare at a woman's ass the entire time. <laughs> no, I didn't even buy it. I played Zelda and shit. How I was dare a you. Nintendo it's one kid. of the best ones. I was a Nintendo kid, okay, and I'm proud of that. I mean, I I don't care about that. I just wanted a good game. Pew pew. Anyway, yeah, that level is awesome because you get to climb all all along the mountains, and then you drive an ATV and you crash and you pass out and you get picked up by what I assume are some kind of secret government agents and taken Area Fifty One prison. So yeah, I feel like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like that is uh, in the future for some people, maybe. <laughs> Replace military with Google security and Area 51 with illegal Google human research lab. There you go. I am pretty sure that is a screenshot from level one. Um, that is not the Nevada level. All right, though. <laughs> so I think... I think in the modern day equivalent, Lara would go and find the secret hidden mining facility in the middle of the desert instead. Well, I'm just going to say let's move along. Fine, you don't want to have fun with this? Well, a normal day, I would, but I, I have a ticking clock. What 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 what's going on with this uh this uh this big company that's gonna set up their own country where they don't actually let you touch your own Bitcoin um <laughs> in the in in the, the Midwest here? Hmm? Oh yeah, I mean obviously don't don't move to PayPal town. It's not fun, but um <laughs> yeah. So we talked I before we've talked a little bit on the show about PayPal adding the option to purchase Bitcoin uh, if you're a U.S. based person in november 2020 although to be honest it was kind of a nothing story because basically you're just buying an iou of bitcoin from paypal because you can't send it to anyone as of this point i don't they said something about they would enable it to certain merchants where you could actually buy things imagine that you can use your bitcoin as as everyone else already does to use it as money um but yeah we didn't really make a big deal of it because uh you can't withdraw it. You can't send it to anyone. Not very interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, I think, episodes 226 and 241. And then according to Market Watch recently, um, despite the fact that it's a very boring uh, addition, apparently PayPal's profits tripled in the fourth quarter of 2020 um, as part of the increasing adoption of digital payments during the pandemic. Um and specifically CEO David, or not David, Dan Shulman is quoted as saying, all these new products and services are really transforming PayPal from a checkout solution to a full super app <laughs> or a digital wallet that transcends payments, financial services and commerce and shopping tools. Wow, that's a bit weird. How 
wait, transcends? Is this like, am I, am I being enlightened when I use PayPal or something? I don't feel that way. I think the user interface is pretty shitty. Um, I haven't really ever used PayPal for anything important, so I eh, don't know what he's talking about. But anyway, uh, there's one particular paragraph in the Market Watch summary. Um, I don't know if this was taken from a report that PayPal put out, or maybe it was a meeting where Shulman gave a speech because they quote him a lot, so it could be that. Um, but regarding their Bitcoin sales, it says that the company made a series of product launches toward the end of the year, including allowing US users to buy, sell, and hold, uh, mostly hold, <laughs> cryptocurrencies through its platform, or mostly not hold, I should say. Those customers who've purchased cryptocurrencies through PayPal have been logging into their, their accounts twice as frequently as they did before, according to the company. Um, and yeah, I mean, that is an interesting statistic that, um, you know, it's possible that a lot of that buying activity through PayPal contributed to their profit uh, going up a lot. And that also there's, um, <laughs> that they're tracking how often they log in to their accounts um, as a useful metric for, I don't know, engagement, I guess. But I, I mean, if it was me and I knew that I had Bitcoin in a PayPal account, I'd probably just check it more often to make sure that PayPal hadn't just disappeared my attendees. Um, because as we all know, you can't withdraw your Bitcoin from PayPal. You just have an IOU on PayPal's stash of Bitcoin. And who knows if they actually have all the Bitcoin they claim to. It's not like um, a lot of the exchanges where you can do this proof of keys type event to check to see if they can actually get their Bitcoin out. So who knows? Yeah, I'm not happy to see that crypto users there are spending more time on the app because that's just... <sighs> they probably are going to suck in a lot of normies who just buy paper coin that they can never withdraw. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that the only reason for that is because if if you're <laughs> if you're silly enough to be buying PayPal or buying Bitcoin through PayPal, you're probably just more into using digital platforms and digital currency like US dollar and euro or whatever, like any digital form of money to transact. And so that's I would assume that's the reason is that you're just more likely to be using these types of accounts um, if you are into digital currency. Uh, but yeah, I don't, <laughs> I mean, I'm also, I'm actually, I'm more pissed about the fact that I've heard from and seen so many people join Coinbase recently, despite the fact that like the number one piece of <laughs> advice that I always give to these people when they, I like, I, I, I mean, I hate responding to it in general because the questions are usually framed as like, how do I invest in Bitcoin? And I get why people ask it that way because most of them don't know very much about money and they think anytime they're using something other than their native currency that that somehow makes it an investment. Um, and I don't want to give investment advice. I don't know how to give investment advice. So... The w one piece of advice I always give is just don't use Coinbase. Like, please do not use Coinbase. But at the end of the day, um, turns out that a lot of people that I've told that to and other people have told uh, to other people, they don't usually listen to that because all they care about when they're looking at exchanges to use is things like, you know, what is the fees on transfers in and out? Like, are they lower? Are they zero? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they look for the lowest fee and that's it. That's how they choose an exchange. And apparently that ends up being Coinbase. Um, and then they get massively disappointed. They got, they got tricked with low or zero fees into a platform that sucks and is also highly immoral. If you have been listening to the show for any length of time, you will know why. Yeah, that was actually hilarious. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that yesterday. N none of my buddies actually give a shit about like not doing um, no or, hold on, grammatically correct here. Um, they don't care about doing no KYC shit. So I have always pretty much just laid out Cash App or Coinbase. Coinbase sucks. 
but most of my buddies despise Jack Dorsey, so won't touch Cash App. And literally, why? Just, I'm just curious. Just, politics or politics, but um. Oh, just because of like, Twitter sh- shit. Mm-hmm. Really, but that's a really stupid. Oh, do you want to know Brian Armstrong's politics? Person, though. Every single person who went to Coinbase because of that despises Coinbase now, just purely on user experience. Like they know nothing about the ways that company has tried to fuck with Bitcoin. They just hate it because it sucks and it's unusable and purchases don't go through. Like literally, I had a buddy tell me like I've made X purchases or attempts to purchase on Coinbase and more of them have failed than succeeded. Yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like if I'm a if I'm new a new person to doing something and someone tells me, "Please do not do this one thing." I feel like I would just not do that one thing and I would just lean on their experience and not have to get like the entire history book worth of explanations for why I shouldn't do that thing, but that's just me. Yeah. The the if anyone does ask that the article that I usually send is the the really eye catching one where it says Coinbase hired cyber mercenaries. Ah, <laughs> uh, Coinbase. And the header image is literally a guy holding up a gun, <laughs> not pointed directly at you, but close close enough. So, I mean, it should just be enough that we we started talking about paypal and coinbase came up because somehow there's something worse than paypal (laughs) yeah i'm i mean yeah like the only reason that i mean i think paypal is pretty shit too for other reasons besides them not allowing you to withdraw your bitcoin i mean they were part of the bank if basically like let's put this way if coinbase was around during the banking blockade against wikileaks they would have jumped on board like immediately they would have been they would have done exactly what paypal did probably faster so that's why i bring up coinbase is that i feel like they're no better in a lot of ways they're worse um paypal just has the advantage of being around longer but it's also still pretty shit for a number of reasons like i fuck you paypal and fuck you coinbase I don't recall exactly when I tweeted it, but when when the announcement came that PayPal was allowing you to buy Bitcoin, and I was like, "Oh, you can't withdraw!" Surprise, surprise. Um, I was like, "Yeah, do you <laughs> do you do you want to use the same company that literally helped trigger WikiLeaks into accepting Bitcoin and making lots of money? Like, is that the company that you want to be trusting your Bitcoin to?" I don't think so. Normie says yes. But zero fees. It's a trap. Can't save them all. <sighs> anyway, I found some evidence that Bitcoin Tina is wrong about something, Janine. Oh boy, what's that? Well, let's just say I have been having heated arguments with him for months now about whether or not this market cycle will have a massive 80% correction like past market cycles or not. And he thinks there won't be. <laughs> I would just like to point to uh, Ruffer Investment Management, a uh, management firm for investing, obviously, um, that put some $600 million into Bitcoin. And after Bitcoin doubled, um, That's according play. to a report filed on the second, they sold half of it to take fifty million dollars in profit, as well as their six hundred million they put in off the table, <clears throat> and are keeping the other half uh, in in Bitcoin. So effectively, um, yeah, they're not just going to hold the Bitcoin forever, <laughs> like every company who puts Bitcoin on their balance sheet is not going to act like Michael Saylor and just forever keep buying more and more and more. They're going to put some in, they're going to let it go up a bit, and they're going to pull their basis back out. And eventually, when that's happening near the top and we start coming down again, 
I would bet so much money a bunch of those companies are just going to stampede out the door and we're going to have another 80% pullback because all of those companies who think they're the next slick guy who's going to buy and watch it double and then just have free Bitcoin sitting there, when we hit the top and we start coming down again, they're going to panic. Oh wait, did you wait for me to come back? Yes, I did. Okay, well, the thing that I wanted to say before I had to quickly jump away is that, um, yeah, so this is part of the reason I'm not enthusiastic about institutional uh, buyers because, um, yeah, sure, we all, <laughs> we all get excited about the fact um, that they're adopting Bitcoin and that, I guess, contributes to the price going up, but then when they sell, again, <laughs> it's like, okay, are they then causing the drop as well? Are the drops going to be bigger? Are they going to get more news because now we can attach big name companies to those big sell-offs instead of just, you know, individuals that almost no one's heard of? Um, doesn't doesn't sound like great uh, marketing strategy if there is one. Which is exactly why we're not going to just magically always go up and never have a correction this cycle. Because the reality is most companies who do that are going to act like rougher investment and not Michael Saylor. They're not just going to put infinity money into Bitcoin and hold it. They're going to put some in. They're going to let it go up. They're going to pull out what they put in and maybe do that again. And that's going to come with, you know, dumping on the other side of that. It's not a number go up magic machine. Well, and also these companies are more likely to just treat it as an investment. They just want to add it to their portfolio and they just see it as, you know, they're just going to look at it as number go up or down regarding whether they do anything with it. They're not going to spend it. They're not going to donate it. They're not going to use it like an actual person. It's just going to be a number for them. So they're also not incentivized really to do anything else than more than that. And that also makes the price unstable because if everyone is just treating it as an investment and not as a money everywhere, um, that's not, <laughs> that's not what we want. Mm -hmm. Still some cycles where we start getting to the point of <clears throat> volatility go away. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, personal opinion on whether there will be a correction or not i just think in general like i'm not super i'm not celebrating screaming in all caps about these people getting bitcoin because to be honest like i wish they didn't have it um like i you know it's an open access system and that should never change i never want it to change but at the end of the day i would rather other people besides these assholes <laughs> were getting Bitcoin instead because these were the people that made a lot of us interested in Bitcoin in the first place because they fucked us up. So why do I want them to have Bitcoin? I don't. <laughs> I just look forward to laughing with glee as we smash back down below $100,000 and everyone's panicking. I mean, I'm not going to panic. <laughs> I am, I literally, you should see, you should have seen me uh, around like my, my friends when there was like major drops in the price. I am the most chill person in the room every time when everyone else is saying, oh my God, it might be over. It's time. Like even people who have been into Bitcoin longer than me, they will be shitting themselves and saying it's over. And I'll just be like, guys, calm down. It's okay. <laughs> Don't freak out. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they're telling me, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 you don't know enough, you haven't been around enough. And, <laughs> and then it goes up again, and everyone is celebrating, and I'm just chill. I'm chill either way. Speaking of volatility and silliness, though, did you see the whole F2 pool shit while that was going on? I, I did not. I feel like this is one of the things that I completely ignored over my social media hiatus. Um. Well, so essentially, um, this site CryptoQuant, which just shows random different metrics, um, got cited as evidence that F2 pool was dumping tens of thousands of Bitcoin and suppressing the Bitcoin price below $40,000. And yeah, um, no, they weren't. And 
I, I just, it kind of blows my mind that FUD like this can still just fly around. But like, one, um, all of that, that data and that interpretation was just clustering literally everything mined by people at F2 pool as just F2 pool. Like uh, all of the money being pulled into that pool was treated as being the pool's money when no, um, almost all of that is actual hash rate operators that point at the pool. Um, F2 pool collects a tiny fraction of that as a fee for coordinating as a mining pool. And then second off, the numbers were absolutely absurd. And the reason for that is um, apparently, um, I didn't know this, but way, way back in the day, um, a lot of like um, companies taking Bitcoin donations, um, things like that were getting spammed with uh, massive amounts of dust outputs. Um, and I think this even included Mount Gox. And so F2 pool for a while years ago was actually helping these people condense um, all these dust outputs by um, just mining a, a bunch of massive transactions that had no output. So it would just go to the miner fees and take up less space in the block. And then F2 pool would kind of clear that and process it out after it came in as mining fees to like whoever owned it. And so F2 pools address cluster got tangled with all kinds of different entities and shit. So for pretty much the entire F2 pool is suppressing the price of Bitcoin. It, all of that just came from idiots just completely misinterpreting data in a few different ways. It's just mind blowing to me that stuff like that can still circulate this widely. <laughs> Yeah, well, if, uh, you know, prominent or once prominent contributors to Bitcoin can be tricked by uh, a very stupid explanation of a fake signature for Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, yeah, I mean, are, are you are you that surprised? <laughs> Given where this was circulating? Yeah. Also, it should have like the instant you see mining pool dumping tens of thousands of coins um your brain should just be like wait what <laughs> like yeah that that is what? my brain most of the time i'm reading things like, that doesn't make sense there because that literally w would take forever to like wh where where did that come from like you know just out of nowhere oh i'm i'm i have lost faith in bitcoin guys dump it all like no um individual hashers anywhere in that graph dumping shit miners have costs to pay like this there is like you know what i mean like the whole thing was just like i this makes absolutely no sense to me like a miner is going to just start dumping a stockpile of coins especially a pool that would have taken years to accumulate like right after we start pumping like what do, do you have a brain? I believe it's slush that has the brains. <laughs> yeah, that silly, silly fud. Silly fud. What else from the mining world? Well, um, Ukraine is following up on and continuing from um, last year an idea get into mining um the the ministry of energy there is literally considering building out a uh co-location for crypto mining um to potentially use up to three gigawatts of excess nuclear power that they have access to um and, and assuming that the block crypto actually fact-checked this correctly flip a coin um that would put it at around the size of one of the biggest um single hydro farms in china um during the rainy season last year which was around three gigawatts 
So th- that that is a stupidly massive amount of power. I think um, <clears throat> all of Blockstream's facilities together only have like 300 megawatts available. So th- this would be nine times that. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think the nuclear powered Bitcoin mining meme might actually be a thing in a year or two. Oh, goody. So you're excited about that, but you're not excited about Mad Max Nevada. Well, see, this, I think, could help people if a government has Bitcoin to do things for people. Um, I don't want to make the scummy companies governments, too. Like, just... just, mm -mm, mm -mm. It'll only be scummy companies if the scumbags get there first. But they will. They always do. Speaking of scumbags... Alrighty. <laughs> so, um, the last version of the cold card firmware 3.2.2, um, if you use multi-sig and have not upgraded to that, um, upgrade immediately. Um, there was an unannounced security update um, and that, that has been disclosed by Shift Crypto. And... Um, yeah. So essentially the issue is when you establish and register um, the XPubs of a uh, multi-sig wallet with the cold card um, previous to the last firmware update, the device did not verify um, that one of the XPubs in the multi-sig was in fact that device XPub before registering the multi-sig um, and storing that on the device. So that is very important. And that potentially opens the door um, to maliciously swapping XPubs um, into the multi-sig on setup so that the attacker would effectively be one or more of the key holders in the multi-sig. Now, in order to really verify this um, on the device, um, prior to this recent update that uh, does this automatically. Um, Manually, you would pretty much have to export the master XPUB or get that physically off the cold card device. Um, Use a piece of software to generate the child XPUB that is used in the multi-sig setup. And then from there, go back to the actual device and use the address explorer to make sure, hey, the address that the uh, the wallet I got my child XPub from is showing me matches the actual um, address on the physical devices explorer. Um, so yeah, um, that could potentially lead to some shenanigans if you are setting up a multi-sig for the first time uh, with a compromised device. Now, this is not a problem if you are setting up a multi-sig purely between cold card devices and effectively going SD card to SD card from those different devices with no computer or device that could be compromised in between. But if you are using um, multiple devices there and interacting with a computer, um, this is a potential issue. Um, But as um sorry one second as the creator of a nunchuck who was involved in discovering this issue wrote up in his blog post um this kind of goes way beyond just the cold card and gets into the fact that there really is not a solid thorough multi-sig standard for all these devices um and really some of them um don't do this kind of check either. Um, like for instance, Trezor, um, they don't even store the XPubs on the actual device when you create a multi-sig. That's pretty much just passed around um, in PSBTs during signing so that you would get all the XPubs. Um, they would be displayed on the device when you're signing the signature. So like everything out there is kind of rolling their own solution or doing their own thing. And really, um, I think it's just the cold card, um, the 
Bitbox and um, Kobo Wallet actually that are the only hardware devices out there that actually register and store the other X pubs on the device as part of the multi-sig verification. And so, yeah, um, definitely an issue. And if you are using multi-sig with a cold card um, update, um, I would go through and verify things. But this is kind of just the, the entire design space of multi-sig, especially across different devices, is a nightmare right now. And that really needs to kind of coalesce into a standard thing that all devices can do in the same way um, to be able to talk to each other and have the same security guarantees across devices. Or you're going to have a bunch of issues like this when everybody's trying to do things their own way. And I also do want to add, um, this was not mentioned in Schiff's post at all, but in the situation of um, a multi-sig wallet where you don't control all of the keys, there are other people involved there, um, I think the likelihood of this attack actually succeeding is absurdly low because the reality is... Um, if you are going to compromise every person, if you even could in that setup, then there's the potential for somebody to notice, hey, my XPUB got replaced. Like they, they would have the chance to verify, hey, wh why isn't my key in this multi-sig, guys? And if you only target a single person in that multi-sig setup, then the addresses that are generated are going to be different than the other participants. And so if you're actually paying attention and doing things properly, that should be noticed immediately. But regardless of that, um, you know, update, make sure your ass is covered here. And um, yeah, I, I would really like to get a, um, a disclosure from shift on something related to cold card where they don't whine about not being paid a bug bounty when Rodolfo has made it very clear that he is not going to pay out bug bounties to paid employees at a competing company. Um, you, you can, can you grow up now and stop whining about that? Shinobi rant done. Well, uh, in better news, um, on February 2nd, Blockstream announced that they will now be broadcasting the Bitcoin Core reference uh, client code over their satellite service. Uh, and in the announcement post, they say the satellite broadcast ensures that the Bitcoin source code is always available, even in the event of internet outages, the removal of public code repositories, or other interruptions. Another feature of Blockstream Satellite is that downloading the Bitcoin node software is completely anonymous because the data transmission is one way. Naturally, we broadcast the SHA-256 sum files for each source code file so you can verify that they are authentic. Um, yeah, and it would not surprise me if this was... Uh, I mean, I assume that they were probably working on doing this maybe beforehand, but it's possible that this a uh, new feature was uh, influenced by the uh, copyright takedown requests from Fake Toshi and the removal of the white paper from the at least the Bitcoin Core project website because um, yeah uh, if 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 similar attempts are made on the source code itself um, who knows if if certain parties will do something about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely just a cool thing in that once one person bootstraps a node in somewhere, um, if there are internet connectivity issues, like people can then verifiably actually pull the code and compile that themselves and then bootstrap themselves. So th that is kind of just a, a neat option. But I'm not going to lie, as cool as this is, the first thing I thought when I saw this was, but wait a minute, you need code to receive the code over the sat er, error, error, strange loop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you can't get everything you want. It's still a nice thing to have. In other Blockstream news, though, um, a new 
Um, Blockstream Explorer and Blockstream Green update has dropped that allows you to unblind the amounts for confidential transactions on Liquid. So, yay! You can get audited now! What? Get audited? Well, yeah, because now, now there's actually a tool that doesn't require futzing around on the command line to... um give somebody the viewing key to unblind the the amount for an output i see but yeah um honestly i kind of it's kind of amusing i didn't even notice that you couldn't do that and that is probably an important thing um to have available easily but the entire thing is done um client side in the browser so as long as nothing is compromised there um None of that, um, none of the viewing key or the amounts or anything should leak back to Blockstream servers. Um, Do it over Tor. Yes. If Tor works at the time. <laughs> but also, um, the green update comes with the ability to customize the timeout period um, for things to be spendable without the 2FA, as well as a firmware update for Blockstream Jade. Woohoo! Let's get audited! Let's get audited! Let's get Will Smith in here. Do you not get that joke at all? No. You've never seen Seven Pounds? He... Mm, no. Okay, well, he impersonates his um, IRS agent brother in the movie. Uh-huh! How have you not seen Seven Pounds? Mm. How have you seen based not on seen the story. Big Lebowski? How have you not seen the Big Lebowski, huh? I huh? I, ha I huh? have seen it, Shinobi. I just don't like it. <laughs> exactly. There's something wrong with you. You clearly I, can't have seen that movie. I have unenthusiastically watched it twice. I don't believe you. You'd like it if you'd seen it. For the first time, I was confused for literally the entire movie. I was like, "When when is something going to happen?" I'm like waiting. I'm waiting for the moment where I care. <laughs> about what's happening <laughs> the bums will lose lebowski the bums will lose yeah old man said take any rug in the house honestly the, the best scene in the entire movie is when he writes a check to pay for a carton of milk that is like the best that's the best scene in the entire movie this aggression will not stand but it is because it's hilarious like, that was the one time that I laughed. I was like, yeah, that's good. And then my expectations lowered after that point. <laughs> well, clearly you're not a golfer. I, I definitely am not, um, as George Carlin said. Uh, you're, you're lucky you found the damn thing. Pick it up and go home. <laughs> all right, all right. Your nice pants and your nice shirt. We care about nothings, Lebowski! Nothings! Alright, alright, alright. So, uh huh. Miami's mayor that was uh kinda hinting a little bit about uh the city get involved with uh Bitcoin stuff, uh yeah. He's uh he's getting a little more concrete with that. Um so he, he is considering um three tangible things that Miami could do um to benefit from Bitcoin. Um one being give every city employee um, the opportunity to have their salary paid in Bitcoin. Um, two, accept payment for local fees and taxes in Bitcoin. And then three, um, the idea of putting some of the city's um, treasury into Bitcoin. Uh, he's considering the idea of effectively putting some of the public um, city treasury in, but also attempting to raise um, money from a bunch of private investors. So say $250,000 from the city fund and raise seven hundred and fifty dollars um, from three private investors to put into Bitcoin. And then effectively let those private investors pull out and realize some profit later down the line preferentially and then leave the city in control of kind of whatever is left over from there. 
so kind of hybridize um, the investment there to share some of the risk with these private investors, but also share some of the gains with them um, for shouldering some of that risk. So yeah, um, they're actually getting into concrete, rational plans down there. So this could get interesting this year. Give me an excuse to go to Miami. What? Sorry, I was dealing with a cat. All I have to say is I still don't want to move there. <laughs> but the beaches and the Bitcoin and the guns and the weed in Florida, man. And the alligators and the humidity. Florida man wrestles with alligators for fun. Yeah, um, no, thank you. I would like to be able to, like, let my cat outside without um, worrying about them getting eaten by a giant lizard. And teach them to fear the giant lizard. Run to Florida man for help. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to run to any Florida man, thank you. <laughs> it seems like he is uh, at various points during the day um, intoxicated or uh, injured or something. He's probably very busy anyway. Eh, too shitty. Also, but, if I'm, yeah. there, there are a lot, there are lots of beaches that are not in the state that looks like a dick. Just what? Saying. What? 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 Did I say something in a foreign language? You need to wash your your mouth out with soap, Missy. You're, you're acting real inappropriate today. Pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> But I guess while things are looking up in the penis state, um, things are not looking so up over in Africa, the penis continent. Actually, I believe they're looking down, Shinobi. <laughs> looks, looks pretty down to me. Anyway, um, I don't think it was a news item before on the show, but last year for my financial cancel culture presentation, I talked about how the Nigerian government attempted to censor um, the feminist coalition there that were po protesting uh, police brutality by shutting down their bank accounts. And in response, they shifted to Bitcoin donations in order to keep going. Um, and now the Central Bank of Nigeria, as of February 5th, has sent out a letter that states that it wishes to remind regulated institutions that dealing in cryptocurrencies or facilitating payments for cryptocurrency exchanges is prohibited. Accordingly, all DMBs, NBFIs, and OFIs, that is deposit money, <laughs> money, deposit money banks, non-bank financial institutions, and other financial institutions are directed to identify persons and or entities transacting in or operating cryptocurrency exchanges within their systems and ensure that such accounts are closed immediately. Please note that breaches of this directive will attract severe regulatory sanctions. Um, and in the article about this, the president of the Stakeholders and Blockchain Technology Association of Nigeria has suggested that the central bank may not have the statutory or regulatory power to simply order banks to deny services to a set of persons or an entire emerging industry. Um, there is also speculation that the central bank is striking back at an industry which may be reducing its influence due to many Nigerians switching to crypto-based remittance channels in droves. Um, the article cites a tweet with statistics from the central bank on remittances, which shows that between January and September 2020, direct remittance, remittances dropped a whopping 97% from two, um, over $2 billion to only $54.4 million, which is a big change. Yeah. And obviously, that doesn't mean that necessarily... I mean, remittances could also be going down, Um in general, just maybe because of the pandemic, people aren't as able to send back money. Um, but this obviously is statistics for remittances done through the traditional financial system. So the fiat currency, not crypto. It's possible that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are um, making up a large portion of that drop although it's not clear if they have any statistics, if any any portion that they can see is being sent through Bitcoin, but it sounds like it is, and that's why they may be doing this. 
Yeah. Oh, I mean, not every government is just going to go, okay, just jump on board the thing that's going to sink our uh, our control over things. Yeah, and uh, predictably, a lot of the exchanges that are either operating in Nigeria or have Nigerian customers are bending over, spreading their cheeks, uh, and yeah, they're complying with this or saying that they will comply very soon. So, yep, they uh, at the end of the day, none of these businesses will stick up for you. Probably the ones that will are the ones who are actually invested in the community and ideally trying to do stuff peer to peer because they are fighting back, not these exchanges with millions and millions of dollars. Yep. To the exchanges, you are just a percentage of their customer base and they can afford to lose you. But Janine, we're building an open, inclusive financial system. Yeah, um, I, I think they got a little confused. I think, you know, well, you know like I said, cheek spreading. I think that's a different kind of open uh, than the kind that we're talking about. <laughs> Very, very, very open access in that regard. <laughs> Not the kind that I'm interested in, though. Alrighty. A lot of shit coins come out of that. <laughs> isn't that isn't that great? Like it's like a perfect, uh, perfect match made in shitcoin heaven. You're on fire today. <laughs> Alrighty, though. Are we ready for a progress update with Utrexo? Mm-hmm. So for those not familiar um, or don't remember, this is Tage Dryja's um, setup for UTXO set commitments um, that are not part of the consensus process. Um, they have just dropped a new demonstration implementation um, that actually um, runs um, in in the um, hold on brain a new implementation that actually runs in the Utrexo um, pruned mode, so that it's literally just using the um, commitment to the Utrexo set and inclusion proofs to verify things. And um, yeah, there's a. Uh, a lot of potential fun stuff here. Um, first off, ignoring the the trade offs of having to keep the the proof around that your outputs are in the UTXO set. Um, it's actually something I had not um, considered before, but removing the entirety of the UTXO set would allow um, those nodes to effectively ditch level DB. Um, which is used to store the UTXO set and no longer have a database set up built by Google um, be very tightly intertwined with the consensus project or process. So, you know, that, that does have a lot of implications in the sense of you're going to have to re-scan the chain or hope somebody has the the proofs around there for you to grab easily if you were to ever lose the proof that your outputs are part of the utxo set but as much as i really don't like that trade-off um the idea of ditching level db and not having that be part of consensus anymore um that is really has me kind of rethinking a lot of my dislikes of some of the trade-offs of this setup and uh yeah that that could be a pretty powerful thing um also sadly um the the meme of a full node in a few kilobytes um is not going to happen um because the block headers are a couple hundred megabytes. But I think in the grand scheme of things, um, nobody really cares that you have to have the couple you know, hundred megs of block headers in addition to a few kilobytes committing to the UTXO set. Um, that's still a massive, amazing exponential gain. So uh, yeah. And um, one other cool thing about this um, that they're working on 
is the idea of um, parallel um, blockchain validation. So with the ability to parse the, the UTXO set commitments, um, with no trust trade-off here, um, one of these UTXO nodes could potentially do parallel um, validation of the historical blockchain if somebody fed them or commitments to the UTXO set at certain block heights were hard coded into the client to get around the problem of, well, I can't validate the UTXO set at block 500 without doing at 499 and so on and so forth. Um, you would just have the hard coded commitments for a number of block heights um, dissecting the blockchain and would be able to validate all those sections of the blockchain um, in parallel. And there's no security loss because you can just hold on to um, all of those sets and make sure that they match. So like, let's say I'm validating blocks one through 500, but also 500 through a thousand. Um, I can just do both of those in parallel. And when I'm done with five through 1000, I just hold on to that. And I wait and see if when I'm done with one to 500, that the UTXO set at 500 matches what I started block 501 with in the other chunk. And so you can do all of this in parallel. And the worst that happens is somebody fed you a bad commitment, things don't match up at one of those transition points. And so you just do it again, or you can calculate um, the UTXO set commitment for that yourself. So th this could radically speed up um, the initial block download. And really the only kind of trade-off here is you might expend more resources if you were fed um, bullshit commitments for some section of the blockchain. Like it, it would still eventually get found out in the validation process. So yeah, a um, lot of progress in this. Um, let's go. I'm just imagining right now how irritated people at Blockstream are going to be when this gets deployed and then somebody goes, hey, Blockstream satellite, why isn't this feeding you TreeXO data? Why isn't this feeding the IBD with that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I guess that takes us to the last story. Well, it won't quite be the last because I actually found something a few minutes ago that I want to mention. But yeah, so speaking of uh, cheek spreading, um, US-based cryptocurrency users uh, are probably not too happy about the IRS becoming increasingly anal, shall we say, about uh, finding out who owns Bitcoin and how they use it and how much, blah, blah, blah. Um, after especially a question was added to the 2020 uh, individual tax return form that asked whether at any time during 2020 did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in virtual currency. Now, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are probably going to be scared into answering that question uh, in the way it is asked, which is that like literally... It, it implies that if you have touched any cryptocurrency at all, that you should answer yes to that question because they use words. Um, but according to Crypto Tax Girl, um, on February 2nd, she actually was, she said she was reading the IRS guidance on this question and found that you only need to answer yes if you sold crypto, traded crypto, spent crypto on goods or services, received an airdrop or fork, received stocking, or stocking, well, yes, I guess you would receive stocking. Uh, <laughs> staking, masternode, or other crypto rewards, uh, received crypto as compensation. But you can answer no if you only bought crypto, held crypto, or transferred crypto between wallets that you control. So yes, um, apparently buying, holding, and in like internal transfers are not included in this very broad question about receiving, selling, sending, exchanging, or otherwise acquiring financial interest. 
Which is quite interesting, and I guess uh, that is good for the people who um, have never gotten Bitcoin from working for it or trading it. Uh, so yeah, I guess the new advice if you don't want to open up the potential to dox your coins to the IRS is to not work for Bitcoin and just buy it and hold it, <laughs> which uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people that's actually how they got it. So um, I feel like, I don't know, this is good news for them and probably the majority of people um, as long as you're not trading. But uh, yeah, the IRS does not know how to word questions properly and they require you to read guidance in order to figure out how to answer this question. Um, and basically the explanation for this is that um, that you would only answer yes if you are actually going to report taxable events in cryptocurrency in the tax return or a different form related to that. So yeah, if you're not if you if you don't have any taxable events to report, then essentially you answer no, even if you did acquire Bitcoin by buying it. So that's good news for those people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are quite a lot of hodlers that are very happy they don't have to go, yes, IRS, I have Bitcoin. But uh, as the last story that kind of fits in right after this one, um, if you do uh, have, uh, as a result of this form and others, some taxable events to report, you may want to donate and possibly get tax deductions on those donations. And apparently there is a collaboration now between Crypto Cloaks, which is a 3D uh, printing company that I think I've actually met. They were at the Lightning Conference. Um, they mostly build like custom uh node boxes or node covers um and they are now collaborating with the human rights foundation and they built a custom statue that you can get in like a clear white form i can't remember recall what it's made of but then there's also an orange one and um a portion of the i think it's a portion a portion of the donation or a portion of your purchase will be donated to the human rights foundation i don't know if that is tax deductible or if you have to do it directly with hrf but anyway another thing you can get that benefits the uh bitcoin donation fund that's run by hrf Woo. Yeah, crypto cloaks actually does make some neat things i still need to fucking stop being lazy and order one of those open dime grenades I have enough of the damn things Alrighty though final thoughts janine beep boop um, yeah, final thought is that uh, since our last show, unfortunately, if any of you are fans, I don't know if you will be, but I'm a fan of The Sound of Music, and unfortunately, Christopher Plummer died on the 5th at the age of 91. He plays Captain Von Trapp in Sound of Music, and it's very sad, so uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not a military person, so I won't say uh, salute the captain, but it's a great movie, watch it. My final thought is, guys, we're going to meme Elon into killing Litecoin, okay? All right, it, it, go on my Twitter account. There's a meme. You got to meme it. It's it's just Litecoin laying in bed, and then Doge comes up and smothers it. Let's Come on, let's flip, let's flip Litecoin with Dogecoin. They get okay. merged mine together, so this can get all kinds of hilarious. Okay, my final, final thought is please shut up about Elon, because otherwise I'm just going to keep ignoring Twitter. <laughs> Not until he retweets the meme and helps kill Litecoin. Okay, well, first of all, I don't know if you would actually get Elon retweeting it, because according to that Clubhouse interview he did where he talked about um, putting gaming chips in monkeys' brains, um, he said that he has like a meme army who works on his behalf, so... You don't Elon's have to. meme army. Retweet the meme. You don't have to attract Elon. You just have to attract his meme army. We can do it. But yeah. All right. I guess that is a wrap. We will catch you later, punks. I need to go to the bathroom. XRPP. <laughs> Let's hang it just on Yeah, you can have a
Yes, 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 yes,